Hi everyone! I'm here to demonstrate how to paint skin. So, when you want to paint skin, or if you want to paint anything, you want to start with like a mid-tone for the background. I usually use a little bit of a warm canvas, but yeah, I think I'll use like a French gray today. There's barely French, mostly just gray. Okay, that's good. That's a Whisper Vein canvas. Okay, I'm gonna merge that and lock it and then make another layer and gonna make some sketches. So I'm gonna be demoing on thighs today because y'all are horn dogs. So first things first, you're gonna worry about base tones. So I'm gonna go from lightest to darkest. Usually when I pick skin tones, I'm not gonna be right here or right here, usually in the middle like this across this diagonal line, or, you know, sometimes closer to the top. It just depends on what it is, but for this more Caucasian skin tone, I'm gonna go for something like that, probably a little darker, and I'll just fill it in. I'm probably just gonna duplicate this and then change the tone, because I don't feel like going around those lines again. Don't cancel me, hang on. White Caucasian skin has the least melanin in it, so you're gonna see a lot more red undertones because if underneath the skin there's like blood and organs and all that ish. So it's gonna be pretty red toned and there's gonna be more like blushy type things going on, so usually I like to airbrush a little bit of like pink, just where the bits are more fleshy. It just makes it feel softer. But over here, we're gonna go more, a little bit more pigmented bit on the East Asian side. I'm gonna start right here and then go down this diagonal line once again. Usually these like olive-ish skin tones are a lot more, not a lot, but a bit more cool because there's a little bit more pigment in their skin. So you don't see as much as the red underneath. Sometimes you'll go down that line and it'll be a little bit too desaturated and dead looking. So you can just go up and go more towards that orangish color and I'm just gonna airbrush until I see something that works and then use that. If it looks a little bit weird, shading is gonna do a lot so don't really worry too much because that looks pretty saturated but I'm gonna airbrush and change it a little bit. Skin tends to be a little different everywhere you look. You can still add a little bit of blushy red tones to it. I like it stylistically. Third of all, I'm gonna go for more brown skin. Again, you're gonna go down that diagonal line and go a little bit more up for the saturation so it doesn't look dead. It's a big thing. You don't want your skin to look dead because it's like the whole deal with skin. It's a living being. So I'm gonna go up to this more saturated and color pick it like that. Usually if I want to pick a new color to introduce somewhere, I'll just go to an extreme version of that color, airbrush it on, and then color pick. You gotta just mess with it, add certain parts with more saturation and less saturation. Again, the fleshy bits are usually a little bit more saturated and anything closer to the human frame or the skeletal form, you can be a bit less saturated with it. Okay, and now we're gonna go for more black skin tones in the last one. So I'm probably just gonna use a pen because <laughs> you can't really airbrush that on. Again, diagonal line, usually up more towards the saturated color. You don't want anything too desaturated once again, especially for uh, black skin tones. So I'm gonna airbrush this with more saturated orangish, reddish colors on the tummy and the inner thighs. I'm gonna go for this blue color here up and go for the outer edges. I'm gonna merge those together. Right now I'm just making the sketch a little bit more red tone so it looks nicer. Usually you don't want anything gray or black. I'm gonna put these in a folder so I can move them around. All right, so how in the world do you paint skin? First of all, I'm gonna merge all of these together. That might be scary for a lot of you. You guys gotta remember that I'm a digital painter, so I'm pretty used to merging stuff together pretty fast, but don't be scared, you'll be fine. What I used to get wrong a lot with skin is I used to use a ton of hard shadows with it. So I feel like everyone on art YouTube a few years back would love to just dog on the airbrush and say that you shouldn't use it, but skin is a very great example of when you should be using an airbrush because skin is very soft and using hard shadows for everything is just not gonna work to represent the texture of what you're shading. Since skin is gradual, none of the shapes are super harsh, you're gonna wanna use a lot softer shadows. So I'm just adding a little bit more blushy parts just because I love those gradients a lot part of my style. You don't have to do all that, but merge those together. So for our first step, you're gonna want to figure out where in the world the lighting is coming from. So most typically lighting comes from the top down because of the sun. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna make another layer on top, clip it to the skin base tone layer, and set it to multiply. I'm gonna blur this later, but right now I just need to map out the general shadows. So if we're going top down, we're gonna think of all the planes that are facing upward 
upwards or like slanted at least facing upwards so usually there's some sort of divot right here which that is way too dark usually i just pick the skin tone and use that color on a multiply layer it'll darken it for you which usually i adjust the colors after i block everything out so don't worry if it looks a little weird but usually there's a bit of a divot right here where that belly button is so i'm probably not going to use a hard brush for that i'm probably going to use an airbrush because it's not a very pronounced thing i'm just going to use a line tool and go across like that very subtle just to say that there's a tummy there and you can erase the sides if you want all this ish is usually in shadow because this gorn area is facing the floor so obviously the sun is not catching that if i make a another layer and add some arrows going down this usually helps by the way even if it feels like rudimentary i do this stuff all the time this plane is facing forward so it's gonna catch some light but anything that's facing downwards is not gonna catch light so that's where the shadows will be can't really see the shadow because it's black but let me just make it a bit lighter you can see in between these thighs right here they are not really getting that light they're not facing down but they're together so the light isn't really getting through to there because it's covered by all these shenanigans any sort of lighting scenario there's always going to be spots that shouldn't necessarily be in shadow according to the light source but because other objects are next to it they're going to be in shadow anyway because all those objects will interfere with each other so that's going to be a lot softer so I'm just gonna how I do that is I just I press right here to start the line I hold shift and then I dot right here or where I want the line to go which is very helpful because it's good for making straight lines but yeah so I make that a little bit softer one big thing about skin that I would never forsake is that it's usually quite soft and you want to emphasize that sort of quality to it so you can see this arrow is pointing to this upper hip right here and since this plane is slanted it's gonna catch that light but as it goes down into the distance there's gonna be less and less light that light is going to diffuse use the area closest to the light source is going to be the strongest and then as it gets farther and farther away it's going to dissipate a little bit i'm going to add some shading to these lower thighs which again is just color picking this color right here and on that same multiply layer just brushing it across the bottom it's kind of creating this diagonal shape right here on the top that is basically most of the shading so lastly i'm gonna just color pick this color right here and go around the edges because i like to think of it as like a little bit of it's called depth shading you know <laughs> shapes that go back into space will always be slightly darker just because that's how your eyes work so around all the edges i'm just gonna go add a little bit of a brushing of shading just to emphasize that it's a 3d form so that's basically most of the shading that i'm gonna do as you can see skin shading as i mentioned is very light and subtle the contrast isn't really built through the shadows it's more emphasized through highlights which i like to make really a shiny skin so we'll get to that eventually there's the first pass of shading is a difference. Also, I'm gonna mention, I usually like to saturate my colors the darker that I go. So if I'm using a deeper shadow, I'm gonna go down that diagonal line and go farther to the right. So I can just get that really nice rich brown color, which I don't really need that for this light of a skin tone, but it's just a little tip will come up later. So now I'm gonna mess with the shadow layer. So I'm gonna alpha lock it. So this multiply layer, I'm alpha locking it. And see how red this is? I'm probably not gonna keep that as red. I'm probably just gonna airbrush it with this color right here, like the base skin tone and brush over it, make it less blatantly red. And if you wanna lighten it in general, you can just go make it a lighter color and that should help. I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna duplicate this and see if I can just overlay it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make this really light because usually you don't want to focus on shadows when it comes to darker skin tones. It's a lot more about showing form with bounce light and highlights. Again, it's pretty dark so for the darker skin tones you're gonna want to be less dramatic with the shading and more dramatic with the highlights. I'm just gonna go lightly on all of them. Select this one and grab that base skin tone, fill it, and erase whatever these doohickeys are. <laughs> Make it a little bit less opaque, that is the word. All right, so I'm gonna merge all those multiply layers together. I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna go to edit, tonal correction, hue saturation, and luminosity. Usually uh, I like to do this after all of this is merged together, but right now I'm feeling silly. So for the hue, you can change the hue to like cooler or warmer or whatever you want. The advice is to use cool shadows and warm highlights, which you can interpret however you like, but I'm just gonna go for a cooler tone, which is minus 19. And 
don't really worry about the numbers. I just kind of slide these together and see what looks good. I don't know if I want to saturate those like crazy. <laughs> I think I'm probably just gonna go like that. Then luminosity just makes it darker or lighter, which I probably shouldn't mess with this because it kind of makes everything look dull. So you have that basic shading down. Actually, okay, I'm gonna add that little highlight to emphasize that there's a shadow there. Usually with painting, it's a lot of emphasizing the difference between highlights and shadows. So if you have a shadow, it's smart to put a highlight right next to it just so you can add that extra contrast. All right, so I'm gonna merge those and merge the multiply layer down. Sometimes I'll duplicate it and see if it looks okay. I mean, you know, usually contrast is good. And add a little bit more. Well, mm. So I just duplicated that multiply layer and put it on a really low opacity. It's on 16. Merge those two together and then merge it to the base layer. Now it's time for the real fun. So actually before I start anything, I'm going to duplicate this base layer. Go to edit, tonal correction, and color balance. Then I'm going to mess with these and see if I like anything. That makes everything a lot warmer. This just changes the color balance as it's called to the shadow, the half tones, and the highlights really useful to get different vibes without going in and redoing everything. Definitely want those highlights to be warm. Now this is going to look extremely saturated and dramatic, but that's why we duplicated it so we can lower the opacity. That looks ridiculous, but once you turn it off, you see the difference. All you can do is you can just turn the opacity down and you get like a little boost of saturation. It looks nicer. All right. Anyway, after you do that, I usually just make a new layer on top of it and clip it. And now we're going to start painting away these lines. So I'm going to start at the top here with an airbrush. And I'm going to go to a pretty small size and make a straight line across the top right here. So I'm going to press my pen right here, hold shift, and then press it right here just to make that straight line. I do that a lot for edges. I'm going to soften that edge a little bit. It's elastic, so it's like pushing into the skin a little bit. It's going to be a little bit softer. And usually if there's any sort of indent, there's a shadow on both sides of that indent. If it's going in right here and on the flesh on top, then there's going to be a bit of shading on both sides of that little crevice kind of thingamabob. It's quite dark, but I'm just going to emphasize that sort of thing. I'm going to talk about one really important thing when it comes to shading skin or something that I do a lot is whenever I make a shadow I like to outline that shadow with a really saturated version of that color so I'm gonna color pick that shadow and go up on that color wheel sometimes I'll change the hue to make it more pink and I'm gonna use that same line thingy with the shift so press right here hold shift and then do that emphasizes that this is flesh and there's blood underneath also on edges of skin I like to make it more saturated so I'm probably gonna on well Okay, before I do that, I'm gonna select this color and brush away that line, at least in the parts where it's sketchy. I'll worry about the belly button later. I'm gonna merge. See how much better that looks? Like, it, it, like all this is airbrush. <laughs> we'll get to hard edges later, but okay. So I'm gonna merge those together. So we're now all on one layer again. I am going to make another layer and I'm not going to clip it to the bottom because I'm gonna color pick this color and then make it a lot more saturated and higher up. I'm just gonna outline the body and then I'll color pick so it's less dramatic. Again, with the airbrush, just so it's soft. So I'm going to tell you something about shading 3D forms. I learned this in a TikTok a while ago. It was very helpful. When you're shading something softer like skin, it's cylindrical, so it goes back into space. The edge is not going to be super sharp. I'm not sure if the uh, extra saturation on the edge is actually a thing. I think that's just a stylistic thing, but sometimes you're going to have to erase on the bottom as well. That's all blended in mostly. I'm going to merge those two together and erase a little bit so that line is better. Now, those edges are soft and gradual. You can turn back on that alpha lock. I'm gonna work on this belly button right here. I like to make them slanted because I'm chonky. I'm gonna make another layer and clip it to the bottom. Usually it just, it protrudes a little bit. Right here, there's usually like a little pooch or something. That means that this little spot is gonna catch a bit more light than this little spot because it should be protruding slightly past it. I'm gonna choose the base color right here and I'm gonna go up to the left again in the diagonal line. I'm just gonna make a little shape right here here under the belly button and that looks strange but not for long. I'm gonna alpha lock it, airbrush around, make it a little bit more integrated. Sometimes it's a little bit too light which is fine. You can just airbrush and make it darker. There's that little bit of a highlight. I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter. I'm gonna add a little bit of a ring of saturation around that highlight. I'm gonna go up to this orangey color and lightly make that ring right there with the airbrush. And then I'm gonna merge that together. I'm gonna go for the shadow on top. I'm gonna make another layer. 
lip it. Once again, with painting, it's pretty common to face those highlights with shadows just to emphasize the difference in form. The reason I'm putting a shadow right here is because the light is facing down, right? That light will catch that rib cage because it's facing a bit upwards. And then under it, it's usually a little bit slanted the other way. If this is a side view, say like the rib cage is slanted slightly up and then it goes down. So it's slanted the other way inside. And then there's like the pooch right there. Very general, but as you can see, if the light is going this way, then it's going to catch on this surface and not as much this one because that's not really where the light is headed. It's going to catch right here, not as much right here. But since it's a curved surface, it's a lot more likely to just like diffuse as it goes down instead of more of a sudden change right here, which depends on how much body fat you have, but typically there's more of a sudden little divot right there. If your tummy goes out a little bit, there would be a shadow above that highlight right here, which that's really dark, but <laughs> again, you color pick and then you go diagonal and choose whatever. I usually like to go more red just because I really like using a lot of red in my paintings and because it makes sense because we got, we got blood, you know, ketchup inside. Mm -hmm. I'm going to alpha lock that and use the airbrush to kind of blend it in a little bit. I love using these little shapes. It works so well. Okay. So once you got something like that, I'm going to color pick this. Choose a super bright red color and go around that little shadow just to add a little saturation. I'm going to merge that together. I'm going to make another layer, clip it to the bottom, choose this color, brush it, and then choose the blended color, brush it, you know, just blend out the edges so you can't really tell that you use shapes for that. Okay. Once that's mostly blended out, I like to zoom out just to make sure that it looks okay. There's a difference. Just merge those two together. So this is like most of what you need to do for skin, but I'm gonna do a little bit more. So every time I do something else, I'm gonna add another layer and clip it. So that's what I just did now. I'm gonna blend that a little bit more. I'm gonna emphasize this little crease right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this shadow color, make it a little bit darker, and bring it a little bit closer to blue on the color wheel. I'm gonna make a little crease right here and just make it a little pinch. For skin, I like to really emphasize that it's squishy and <laughs> soft. I love how that looks. So there's that little pinch right there if you want you can add a little bit of a highlight which whenever i add highlights within shadows i like to make them super saturated once again i'm gonna add a little highlight right there in that bright orange color and blend it out now sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't you gotta be a little careful usually i just try it and if it works i'll keep it and if it doesn't i'll just get rid of it but you know sometimes it's too saturated sometimes it's too dull you just kind of have to feel it out and problem solve as you go see so yeah, i think that looks okay i'm gonna add a little bit of that saturated red Red color on the edge of this shadow right there. I'm gonna merge. Well, I'm gonna check. That's why I do everything on separate layers so I can hide it and then show it again just to see if the difference is good enough to keep or maybe if I want to erase certain parts and redo certain things. It's a really foolproof way to just make sure that all the changes you make are making positive differences because sometimes it's easy to get carried away and do a bunch of stuff that doesn't really benefit what you're doing. It's a little bit of harm reduction I guess you would call it. I'm gonna add more pinches the bottom where the hemline is. Again, made another layer. I'm going to add those shadows right here. Then you can add a highlight on top. I'm going to go for more pink. I love using cool pinks in my work. Blend that out a little bit. It's just the kind of color that pops a lot. For digital art, you can really choose any color. For me, I just like to choose my favorite colors, which is either that cool-ish pink color or I could choose a baby blue or something. I usually alternate between those two just to create more of an interesting mix of colors. And they go together quite well, so you can just choose like a signature two colors and use those a lot in highlights and the rims around shadows. I could go right here and use a blue if I wanted to. Whatever color you like, you can choose and it'll look closer to something you like. But I'm going to use pink just so it's a little bit more uniform. Because generally, that uniformity does matter quite a bit. So don't stray too far. But I'm sure you get what I mean. I'm going to emphasize that rim again with that saturated orangey pinky color right here. And I'm going to add a little shadow right here just to emphasize that this goes in like that. I'm going to clean that edge up. That should be good enough. That is most of what you need to do at least. I'm going to go a little bit extra and clean up these shadows on the edge. 
edge and add a bit of a saturated pup on the edges. I'm gonna use a bigger brush for this because I don't want it to look any sharper than it is. It's quite a soft shadow. I don't know if I want to do that on both sides. I'm just gonna blend this in a little bit more. Add more of a shadow on the bottom just to emphasize that it's going in and getting sucked in by that hem. That should be good after I blend it out a little bit more. Yeah, that looks nice. Last step for skin is that highlighting that I love to do. I'm gonna merge those two together. I'm gonna make another layer, clip it once again, and airbrush some light as color. So I'm gonna go up to the top and genuinely just like hit the top of that. Once again, I'm going to lower the opacity, so don't worry if this looks strange. I'm gonna choose a pretty big airbrush, brush over what would be highlighted, or for the sake of emphasizing depth, I usually just choose the spots that are closest to the viewer, even just the spots that are surrounding all the shadows, just to emphasize those. So I'm gonna airbrush around this shadow right here, and this shadow right here, and this one right here. Make sure it doesn't look splotchy or anything, you wanna just blend that out. I'm gonna lower the opacity, just depending on what looks good to me. See the difference? It looks a lot better. Merge those two together, and then... The funnest part, at least for me, is the highlights, like the sharp highlights. So I'm gonna make another layer, clip it once again, use a hard brush. I'm gonna go to white. People think that that's a cardinal sin, but look, I c you can always darken it later, so it's fine. I'm gonna go to pure white. I'm gonna choose some spots where the highlights would be. So you're gonna think about that form again. You can just choose the spots where you highlighted earlier with the airbrush, like right here. I usually like to make little shapes, put two together, one bigger one and one smaller one. So one right there, definitely one right here. You don't want to go too overboard with something like this because, you know, less is more. You don't want to overkill is never really very beneficial. I'm going to move these over. So two should be enough alpha lock. I like to brush the edge with some sort of pink color. You can do that or you can use yellow. I've seen a lot of people use yellow. Yellow works really well, especially if the skin is really like warm tone. And for yellow, you don't want it to be super saturated. You can brush it on and kind of color pick and make it a little bit lighter. Sometimes if that highlight is a little bit too harsh, you can just color pick the color right next to it and airbrush it on just so it looks like it's blended when technically it isn't because <laughs> it's on a different layer. Generally, that's how I do that. Sometimes I like to just add more shapes. It's yes, basically, it's a lot of trial and error. I'm gonna merge those together, make another layer, color pick this, choose something more saturated, make a line right here just to emphasize that it's round, blend it a bit together. It's just a lot of emphasizing what shape the form is. I'm gonna go over one more time. I'm gonna make another layer and I'm not gonna clip it. I'm gonna choose like an all the way saturated red and go around the edges with a medium-ish sized brush. Make those edges softer once again and then merge. You can blend those out if you so wish. And lastly, I like to go and emphasize the darkest shadows a little bit, like with dark, dark red. I like to use deeper reds for shadows quite often, just because I like red, so it feels like a nice spot to put red. Okay, wait, I'm gonna do that on another layer, actually. Usually the darkest shadows on soft forms end up being little dots, just because the skin will pinch together and overlap a little bit, and it'll just create that little dot of shadow. So I'll do that, and then outline it with a super saturated red, merge them together. Yeah, generally at the end it's just a lot of little stylistic things. Like putting little dots at the ends of shadows and whatever you feel up for doing. Maybe I'll make that a little bit darker. <laughs> that should be good. I think I'm satisfied maybe at the end of paintings, which I'm gonna do the rest, but I like to go to the airbrush section and press the second one, which is spray. You can use this for glitter, beauty marks, and whatever. I just like to brush it over for sparkle purposes. So if your particles are too big, you can look over here in the brush settings and change the particle size, like they get huge. You can make them really small. You can change the density, so how many particles are in each stroke, so that's super dense and that's super dispersed. Usually you want to go for a pretty low density if you're doing what I'm doing, which is making it sparkly. I start with a really small particle size and a really small particle density and just brush over the surface. And you can't really see it, but if you zoom in, you will. A little bit of texture. Maybe I'll go in with white and then black, and then I'll choose a super saturated color or a mid-tone depending on what I'm shading. If it's skin, I'll go for red. For glitter, I'm gonna make the particle size a little bit bigger. Go to white again and go over those highlights if you want. 
can go over here again with those bigger particles on certain spots. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the regular airbrush, make it transparent, and erase some parts because it gets a little bit too much. I'm gonna erase right here. You don't want that texture everywhere, but it is nice to have. I'm gonna merge those two together, make one more layer, maybe add a beauty mark or something. Okay. So that is how I shade the skin tone. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade these thighs doing the same general procedure and I'll be back.
Boo! Did I scare you? <laughs> I didn't even record an intro for this. Hi, I'm back. Welcome! With darker skin, you want to focus on the highlights instead of the shadows. I made another layer, gonna clip it to the bottom, and set it to screen. I'm gonna select this color right here, and I'm gonna choose all of the areas that will catch light. This spot right here will, this spot right here, and this spot right here. A little bit of this, and a little bit of the top right here. I'm gonna blend these down. Blend these out. Okay, I got something like that. If that's a little bit too light, you can just lower the opacity. Alpha lock. Choose a more saturated color and go over the top parts. Just to emphasize that that's where the light source is coming from. And to also emphasize that there is blood underneath the skin. So there's lots of warmth. Merge those together. Now I'm gonna clean up those edges, so make another layer and don't clip it. I'm gonna choose like a purplish fuchsia-ish color. Pretty dark as well. Just go around those edges with that airbrush. Definitely gonna darken this purple. It's a little bit too light, but we'll fix that later. Okay, so that's all the edges. I'm gonna alpha lock that. Select it all and darken that purple. That should be good. Then I'm gonna erase some of the edges underneath that layer so it's cleaner. to merge those together. The process is pretty much the same, you're just taking a little bit of a different approach. I'm gonna take this purple and Bring it up the thighs. Probably make it a little bit cooler. That kind of thing. So you want to have a lot of like reflective light just to emphasize form. And I'm using orange around those highlighted edges. I don't think yellow works as well on dark skin because there's not really anything that that would come from. I'll add a little bit of a shadow above right here. I don't think that bright red really works. Probably, I guess, blue, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, it looks nice.
All right, I don't think I have much else to add, verbally at least, so I'm just gonna go through and finish these and then I'll be back.
Yeah, okay, that was super long. Let me know if you guys got anything out of that. I wanted to make something longer so I could like provide more value in general because longer videos for me at least, I appreciate them a lot because they usually give me a lot more than something super condensed and simplified. So yeah, if there's anything else you'd want me to cover, I'm, I'm happy to hear it. Just leave a comment below. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you sometime in the future.